I'm Mike Bellevue, and today we're going to be discussing Taylor's & Company's cartridge conversion cylinders. If you like the sleek good looks and the handling characteristics of classic cap and ball revolvers, but you want the versatility of being able to shoot modern ammunition in them, then Taylor's cartridge conversion cylinders are just the ticket for you. They allow you to use standard factory ammunition in a cap and ball revolver. Now, there are some general rules of thumb, and I'm going to explain those, and then I'll show you how to load these revolvers and how to shoot them. Today, we're going to be specifically discussing the Taylor's cartridge conversion cylinders for the Remington New Model Army, the Rogers and Spencers, and the Ruger Old Model Army. But there are some general concepts with Taylor's conversion cylinders that apply for all of them, regardless of what revolver they're made for. First of all, these Taylor's cartridge conversion cylinders do not require shipment through an FFL. You can buy them as an individual and it's completely legal. The next thing to be aware of is that each cartridge conversion cylinder is made out of 4150 Arsenal grade steel. So they are fully capable of handling modern ammunition safely in your cap and ball revolver. Now there is a caveat that you should be aware of. You should only use cartridge conversion cylinders in steel framed revolvers. Brass frame revolvers are simply not strong enough to hold up under the pressures of shooting cartridges over the long haul. We also recommend that you use cowboy type ammunition. There are a number of manufacturers of this. Winchester, Hornady, Black Hills that we're going to be shooting today. They all work excellent and you'll have no problems using them. You should always use a lead bulleted load and of course in these particular conversions for the Remington, the Rogers and Spencers, and the Ruger we're talking about 45 Colt. Now I know that the cap and ball revolvers are nominally 44 caliber cap and ball. And nominally is the key word here. These guns all have a bore diameter, it's just like a modern 45 Colt. And therefore, 45 Colt ammunition works fine. It'll be completely accurate in your gun. But you have to stay away from jacketed ammunition and use lead bulleted ammunition only and use standard velocity. Do not use plus P or any high velocity loads. And if you do that, the guns will operate flawlessly for you. There are a number of manufacturers of cowboy ammunition. Uh, you see here in this picture Magtech, Black Hills Ammunition, Hornady. 10X also makes it. Winchester white box ammunition is fine. There are no lack of vendors who can supply you with 45 Colt ammunition that's suitable for these cartridge conversion cylinders. Even though we're going to be demonstrating in this video the 45 Colt conversion cylinders uh, and the Ruger and Rogers and Spencer guns only are available in 45 Colt, but the Remington is also available for 38 Special. Uh, that would be the 36 caliber Remington revolver. And the one thing that you need to know about that is the bore for modern 38 special is 0.357 inches. Think 357 Magnum. That's where that designation comes from. But the bore of a cap and ball 36 caliber revolver is actually 0.375 inches. And because of that, the bore is oversized for the ammunition, and therefore you're going to get your best accuracy if you use hollow-based bullets, because they will expand uh, and grip the rifling. And there are a couple of vendors who sell them. Winchester's 148 grain hollow-based wide cutters are excellent, very accurate in these cylinders. And the 10X Ammunition Company makes a 38 Long Colt ammunition, their black powder cartridge ammunition, which has a hollow-based bullet, and that is also quite accurate. 
So those are your best bets if you're using the 38 special conversion cylinder. If you have a Ruger old model army revolver, or you have a Rogers and Spencer revolver, each of these guns only was made by one manufacturer. And if you order a Taylor's cartridge conversion cylinder for the Ruger old model army, or for the Rogers and Spencers, that cylinder will fit any Ruger old army you have or any Rogers and Spencers you have. But if you're getting a cylinder for a Remington new model army, also called the 1858 Remington, this gun has had a number of manufacturers over the years. And currently there are two companies that produce Remington new model army revolvers, Uberti and Pieta. Taylors make cylinders for both of those companies, but they don't interchange. So you have to order the cylinder that's made for your specific model gun. And if you're buying a cylinder that's already out on the market, you need to be sure that it's for the model gun that you need it for. And the way you can tell that is on the cylinder itself, stamped right on the rear face, there'll be a P or a U. And in a second, I'll show you a close-up of that, so you'll know what it looks like. But in this case, this one says P, because this revolver is made by Pieta. If you've got a new birdie, of course, you want one that says U. The cylinder on the left is marked with a P, designating Pieta, and the cylinder on the right is marked with a U, designating Uberti. Uh, these are Colt-type cylinders, but all of the cylinders, the Remington cylinders, Ruger cylinders, Rogers and Spencers, are all appropriately marked on the face of the cylinder, just as these are. Taylor cylinders are two-piece cylinders. There's the main cylinder body, which is bored through, and then there's a backing plate, which has six firing pins on it. Now, this is a historic design. Remington came out with this in the 1860s, uh, the very late 1860s. And the originals were different in only one respect. They were made for rimfire calibers, so instead of individual firing pins, like this back plate has, they had slots cut through them so the hammer could contact the rim of the rimfire cartridge and set it off. But this is a fully historic design, and uh, it works quite simply. There's one alignment pin, and that one pin finds its way into a hole in the back plate and that's what holds everything into alignment. Now for safety's sake, though these are six shot cylinders, for safety's sake we recommend that you load them with only five cartridges. And they load quite simply with five cartridges off the gun, leave one chamber empty, and we would recommend leaving the chamber empty either before or after the alignment pin. Most people do it with the one before. That way you can tell what the empty chamber is because you want to put that chamber under your hammer. Put the back plate on. You're fully loaded. And then you can put it on the gun. Now if you have an older Taylor's cartridge conversion cylinder like this one, The cartridge head is fully enclosed in the cylinder body. And I'll just load this and you will see what I mean. The cartridge head is fully enclosed within the cylinder body. When you put the back plate on, your only visual cue as to where that empty chamber is, is going to be your alignment pin and that's going to tell you where your empty chamber is so you can line it up under the hammer. Now if you have one of the newer cylinders, if you buy one today, you're going to find that there is a notch cut into the face of each cylinder and that shows a little bit of the rim of the cartridge. So when you look at it you can get the visual cue as to which one is loaded and which one is empty. 
So when it's mounted into the revolver, you'll still be able to see that glint of brass telling you that there's a loaded chamber there. Well, cylinder removal and insulation is a pretty straightforward process. So I'll show you how to get the cap and ball cylinder out, and it's quite simple. Place the revolver on half cock so the cylinder spins freely. Drop the loading lever about halfway and pull the base pin until it stops. Then just take your thumb and push the cylinder out right into your other hand. And there you go. Cap and ball cylinder is out. Now, to install the cartridge cylinder, I'll show you with an empty cylinder. You would load it, of course. Put the two pieces together. Still have the gun on half cock. We still have the loading lever partially dropped and the base pin pulled. You're going to see right here a little piece sticking out right there, and that's the hand. And when we go to put this in, the hand is going to get in the way. So you're going to push it in until you feel it up against the hand. And then all you're going to do is rotate it about a half a turn in a clockwise direction, and that's going to lift the hand up out of the way. And once you've done that, you can slide the base pin in, put the loading lever up. Now, here's the alignment pin. So what I want to do, because if this was loaded, this next chamber would be my empty one. So I want to get that so that it's one chamber away from being in battery, and then I'll pull it back to full cock and lower the hammer. And now the hammer would be down on an empty chamber, the one right in front of the alignment pin. And because you can see the alignment pin right here, you'll always know if you're on an empty chamber or not. Well, let's load up the cartridge conversion cylinder on the Remington New Model Army and take it out to the range and see how it performs. Half cock, drop the loading lever, pull the base pin, pop the cylinder out, take off the back plate, and load five cartridges. Replace the back plate. Insert the cylinder. Push the base pin back in. Put the loading lever up. Find the alignment hole, which is right here. Drop the hammer, and we're safe. The loading process on a Ruger Old Army is very similar. The difference is we've got a cross bolt that holds the cylinder pin in. So the first step is still to put it on half cock so the cap and ball cylinder spins freely. And we're going to drop the loading lever, but now we've got to rotate the cross bolt so that we can pull that pin out. And in this case, just pull it all the way out. And once again, the cylinder will manipulate right out with your thumb into your waiting hand. Okay, installing the cartridge cylinder is very much like on the Remington. We keep it at half cock. Going to work it in. Get it up past the hand. I like to stabilize it with my thumb and forefinger. And then we're going to put the base pin back in. Now the only complicating factor on a, ramming, on a Ruger, I should say, is that the whole base pin assembly wants to fall apart on you if you're not careful because it's all just toggled together. But it goes back together nicely. Final step is to turn the locking screw on the cross bolt and you're back in business. And once again, you would line it up the same way. Here is my pinhole, and now I'm down on an empty chamber. Well, 
Well, the cylinder removal procedure on a Rogers and Spencer is very much like the Ruger. It has a locking base pin. Turn that screw, put the gun on half cock so that the cylinder spins freely. Drop the loading lever, pull out the base pin. Unlike with a Ruger, this is all screwed together so it won't fall apart. Push the cap and ball cylinder out. Take the cartridge cylinder, insert it into the window, give it a slight twist to push the hand out of the way, reinstall the base pin. Feel your way around on that. There we go. Lock it back up. Rotate it until you can see the alignment pin. That should be your empty chamber. Cock it, drop the hammer on the empty, and you're ready to go. Okay, well, we hope that you really liked that, uh, and if you did, please give the video a big thumbs up, because that helps to um, position it on your recommended videos, suggested videos uh, on the side over there when you're watching something, so you can see more of our content. Now, if you're not a subscriber to the channel, we hope that you'll take a minute and subscribe, because... Uh, if you enjoyed this, there's plenty more videos like this on the channel, and we're going to be turning them out all the time, so we don't want you to miss any. And if you're a subscriber already, you can support the channel on Patreon, and that goes a long way towards being able to allow us to bring you these videos, because, of course, they're not free to make, um, and we really appreciate your support. But... If you don't want to support us on Patreon, or you can't afford to, that is perfectly okay. Uh, because we're going to get this stuff to you one way or another. And we just want you to enjoy it. So if you enjoy it, that's what really matters to us. Matters to me. And the last thing is, if you liked videos like this, uh, we have developed a MikeBellevue.com website. And we've got tons of content. We're loading more content all the time that goes beyond what you can find in the videos. We've got videos out there, but uh, we've got all sorts of things. We've got our magazine articles from the past. We've got a blog uh, for new writing. We've got a photo gallery. So, you know, for a lot of these things, you can not only see the video, but you can watch the video and read the corresponding magazine article. So, the goal is to bring you content that you can't get on YouTube. So go check it out, MikeBellevue.com, and I really hope you'll enjoy it.